Hey, I'm Grant with Grant's Game Rex, and welcome to the first video in my new series on the best expansions coming to retail every month. Sometimes a game is great, but that doesn't matter because we want more and more and more and more. You know, I've played this game 10 times. I wouldn't dream of playing it again unless there was more content. Well, that's what this video is. These are expansions coming to retail, expansions for games you already love that you can go out and get easily. To me, retail means both, you know, friendly local game stores, but also online. You know, some sometimes it's available in a, through the publisher's website or a online marketplace, that sort of stuff. Basically, just any way that you can go it out and get it fairly immediately and easily. So these are the best expansions coming to retail in September 2022. Asmodee and Fantasy Flight Games are releasing Arkham Horror, the Scarlet Keys Investigator expansion. This is for Arkham Horror, the card game. Uh, and in this expansion, uh, you it features six new investigators for the Arkham Horror card game universe. Uh, it's going to add a wealth of new player cards, options for deck building, including new customizable cards that can be upgraded to an investigator's liking. There are a bunch of different roles. These different roles are the butler, uh, the doctor, the security consultant, uh, the operator, the photographer, and the politician. Ooh, everybody wants a politician in their games. Just just what we want sneaking into board games. Politics, you know? Uh, this is a uh, one to four players and plays in 90 minutes. So if you are a big Arkham Horror fan, well, now there is more for you as if there wasn't enough already. All right, and now uh, Devere Games is releasing Red Cathedral Contractors. Um, Red Cathedral is a game that I love personally and have played many times. Uh, it, it's uh, it's got some uh, worker placement, but with it's got some dice placement uh, aspect to it. It's got some uh, you know resource management. It's just it's really cool. And one of the reasons I like Red Cathedral personally is it's a game that I feel has a lot of strategic depth to it but I always can teach it pretty easily. People wrap their head around it fairly quickly. So it's got that really good ratio of strategic depth, but easy to teach. Well, Red Cathedral Contractors uh, does multiple things uh, to the game. Oh, one of the things that it does is it adds a, a board, a new board containing a map of Russia. And you can send your contractors throughout Russia to recruit the talent of the best specialists and artisans of the country to aid in the construction of the cathedral. That's not the only thing it does. It adds 10 new guilds. Uh, it adds six additional blueprint cards. It adds a new card for the solo mode. So there's a lot of content uh, that's coming into it. I haven't had a chance to play Contractors yet, but from what uh, a lot of my friends that like uh, Red Cathedral have been like, oh yeah, this is tight and I'm never going to play without it again. So, if you like Red Cathedral, now there's more. Red Cathedral Contractors. Everything Epic Games is releasing The Librarian's Quest for the Spear expansion. So, The Librarian's is a, an adventure card game uh, uh, that's based on the TV show and movie series of The Librarian's, where these librarians are, you know, they're kind of like Indiana Jones types, where they're adventurers and going out and and saving the world in different ways. Um, it's a, The Librarians is uh, um, not really a campaign game, but uh, like an adventure game where there are standalone adventures in it and you can sort of build on each adventure. So it is somewhat of a campaign game. Uh, well, The Librarians Quest for the Spear adds three new adventures to the game. So if, you, if you've played through The Librarians, this is more adventures to go on. And it adds two new heroes as well. The base game, I believe, came with four heroes. Now there's a couple extra ones you can play as. And if you like The Librarians uh, in terms of you know, the actual IP, um, the core set is focused on the first TV, the first season of the TV show, and this expansion is focused on the first movie. 
So, it, you know, that might help you decide whether you want uh, to add stuff to it. Uh, the, the new characters are Nicole Noon and Flynn Carson. The Librarian's Quest for the Spear. Floodgate Games is releasing uh, an expansion to Fog of Love called Love on Lockdown. And this is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. This is inspired by the pandemic. Uh, do you want to relive that experience of being trapped in a home with your significant other and you can't leave? Well, then play Love on Lockdown. So if you've ever played Fog of Love, it's a really unique game uh, where you are basically simulating a relationship. Uh, and it does a good job in sort of capturing the feeling, you know? Uh, you are essentially playing cards and then choosing an option on a card, and you're choosing an option at the same time, most of the time, as your partner is, and then you might get extra benefits if you both pick the same thing together. And, um, you know, it starts with sort of really romantic comedy stuff, but that gets into, like, real conversations and, like, difficult choices that you have to make in your relationship, you know? Like, should I tell them how they actually look in that outfit, you know? I don't... Sometimes you do. Sometimes it's a bad idea. So that's what Fog of Love is. And like I said, Love on Lockdown is... Um, it's uh, the story of a couple who find themselves locked inside for uh, for months on end with nothing to do. And how do you navigate that? So if you think that sounds fun, then check out Love on Lockdown. Uh, Floodgate Games is also releasing uh, the uh, a new expansion for Sagrada. So there was um, a series of expansions called The Great Facades. There's three of them. And this one is the last, the, the third of the three of them called Glory uh, for Sagrada. So uh, Sagrada, really great, beautiful dice placement game that has a nice puzzly aspect to it, but easy enough to play with anybody. Well, one of the things that... Um, a couple of things that the Glory expansion adds to the game of Sagrada. Uh, one is Pioneer cards. These are ways to score, but the interesting thing is that it's a race. It's like the first person to get to that gets those points. So, you know, it's like the first person to fill all of the spots on the edge of their uh, stained glass uh, card, you know, or all the person to get one in a diag, the first person to get one in a diagonal, stuff like that. It also introduces these gray dice called strife dice, and these score in very specific ways, like restrictive ways. You know, it'll be like, oh, you can only put these strife dice on the middle row or something like that, or they all have to be the same number on this row. Uh, so it restricts their placement, but it adds like an interesting new element and a new different type of dice uh, to the game because Sagrada is all about dice. You like dice? You gotta play Sagrada, dog. Oh, these are pretty dice. I'm never gonna play with a black and white dice again. I'm just gonna steal the dice from Sagrada. <laughs> they look so good. Gray Fox Games is releasing After the Empire solo mode expansion so after the empire is a game i loved uh that came out in 2021 i, I put it on my top 10 of the year uh for that year it was a two to four player game and it is a worker placement tower defense game you are placing workers getting resources and then using those resources to build up your tower to uh help uh fight off you know, invaders uh, that are coming in. So, you know, it really, it, it's a fun, it's a fun tower defense game because you never know where people are coming from and, you know, you might get sacked and it's a big emotional moment when that happens. But it was a two to four player game. There was no solo mode. So this is essentially the solo mode for After the Empire. It is a deck of 30 cards that will allow you to enjoy the game when no one else is around. Uh, so if you, you know, if you, if you've been wanting to play After the Empire, but you don't have other people that want to play it, well, now you can try it out. Play it solo. Keymaster Games is releasing Parks Wildlife. Uh, this just hit retail in September. Um, Parks is an amazing game where you are, uh, hiking along these national parks, uh, getting resources and then using those resources to kind of by national park cards. The artwork is gorgeous. It's a really interesting sort of, 
you know, straight line worker placement where how far do you want to go forward in the line because once you go forward, you can't go back. And so it feels like kind of a, you know, a unique feel in the worker placement genre. And it really does have some of the greatest art in any game that I've ever played. Well, Parks Wildlife um, does a few things. Uh, one is it uh, features all new artwork from the 59 Parks print series and it even includes the newest park edition, the, the newest park in the national park system, New River Gorge. Um, and this, they, call, they call this the expansion of more expansion. You know, it doesn't really change the gameplay a ton, but it adds a bunch of new content. There's new trail sites, there's new canteens, there's new gear, there's more season cards. The one sort of new gameplay aspect that it adds to it is a large wandering bison that moves along the park cards and grants bonuses to the players that visit those specific parks. So if you, lo if you love parks and you just want more, check out Parks Wildlife. Uh, Leader Games is releasing multiple expansions to their hit game, Root. Uh, there is Root the Marauder expansion, Root the Hirelings expansion in the Hirelings box, and Root Clockwork 2. So what are the, some of the things that they do? Uh, the Marauder expansion is all about adding, um, adding a, uh, a couple of uh, a new factions to the woodland. There is the, Horde, the, the Lord of the Hundreds and the Keepers in Iron. So these are uh, to two completely new factions that play differently than any of the other ones, just like all the other things in Root. It's very asymmetric. Uh, if you want uh, more asymmetry to it, more options, there are now two new factions you can play as. It also adds uh, four hirelings uh, to the game and a new setup draft suitable for both casual and competitive play. But really, Marauder is mostly about those two new factions. Because then Root, the hireling box, is really all about adding more hirelings to the game. Uh, so uh, th there are six new hirelings in the hireling box, and then also you know a box to store all the hirelings you've gotten from previous expansions and things like that. Makes it easily accessible and uh, and all in one place. Um, and you know the hirelings were sort of meant as uh, you, you can use them in any player count, but they were really designed as for lower player counts of Root. When you play it with two or three players, it adds uh, more pieces to the map and things like that uh, with fewer players. Uh, and then lastly, the Clockwork expansion adds four new automated opponents. The Lizard Cult, the River Folk Company, the Corvid Conspiracy, and the Underground du Duchy. Oh, I, I wish I knew what that word, how to say that word. I, Duchy. Douche, to feel douchey feels not right. I don't think that's the right thing. So, you know, hey, check out the Clockwork Expansion 2. Uh, this is, um, you know, this spa spices up the factions from the first Clockwork Expansion as well. So there you go. If you like Root, you got a lot of options. Uh, Looney Labs uh, is releasing Chrononauts missing artifacts. So Chrononauts is a game that came out a long, a, almost, I think, like 20 years ago uh, from them. And it was about traveling back in the time and, and, and doing stuff back in the time. Well, this adds six new mission cards to Chrononauts or to an earlier, a, another version of Chrononauts called Early American Chrononauts. So you can add six new mission cards to either of those versions of Chrononauts, and these missions are going to send you through time in search of treasures like uh, lost Fabergé eggs, D.B. Cooper's suitcase full of money, and stuff like that. It is a, a micro expansion. It is 18, it's 18 cards in this uh, Missing Artifacts expansion, and it includes a few uh, powerful new gadgets in that as well. Uh, Play All Day Games is releasing multiple uh, expansions to Catapult Feud. So if you if you know Catapult Feud, it is essentially uh, you build a, a defense, I build a defense, and then we have a bunch of gadgets that are shooting cannonballs and we're trying to knock each other's castles and defenses down. It's a very silly, fun, 
activity where you are just launching cannonballs and trying to knock stuff down. You know, it's, it's got a lot of fun table presence to it and all that sort of stuff. Well, these two expansions that are hitting retail, one is the Artificer's Tower, and this adds a bunch of stuff uh, into the game. It adds um, new bricks that allow you to build a tower into your castle, so not just the wall, but the, the tower as well. It adds a new weapon, the Mighty Plunger, which looks kind of like a battering ram, and then it also adds new special type of ammunition, the Beehive. And instead of a boulder, which is what the normal things, I said a cannonball, but it's, a, it's mostly supposed to be a boulder. And instead of a boulder, the beehive ammo, uh, if you hit any of your opponent's bricks, the beehive breaks open and the bees chase the troops. And so you get to move the opponent's troops away uh, uh, to new, new locations if you want to. So if you like a Catapult Feud, here is more stuff for it. And then the other one, um, the other expansion for it that is hitting retail in September is the Vikings expansion. So this introduces a whole new game, game mode. Whereas the Artificer's Tower is just sort of extra content for the game, this is a new game mode. During setup, you're going to place the Viking longship in the battlefield at an equal distance between players and then you shuffle the viking cards and place them in a pile face down beside the longship take two viking warriors per player place, the, place them in pairs at an equal distance between players and now these vikings are going to move towards each player so you know if you're not just worried about your opponent you're worried about these vikings coming at you as well so you know adds just a little more action into the game with vikings uh renegade games is releasing multiple expansions uh this month uh they are uh the the first of them is uh the gi joe deck building game um it is the expansion is called shadow of the serpent uh, so G.I. Joe is a, uh, is a deck building game where you and fe fellow players lead teams of G.I. Joe soldiers on missions to stop Cobra's dastardly plans. Obviously um, all inspired by the old G.I. Joe cartoon. Um, the core set had a bunch of different missions in it and this is adding more missions to the game. So if you've played through the missions in the core set of the G.I. Joe deck building game. Well, now this expansion includes new missions, main deck cards, Cobra officers and troopers, and a command center to build and protect. So more content for the deck building game, G.I. Joe. Uh, Renegade Games is also releasing a, uh, an expansion to the Transformers deck building game. This is called a Rising Darkness expansion. Uh, so, like the G.I. Joe one, the uh, Transformers deck building game is a deck building game inspired by the old Transformers IP. So you are trying to become a mighty Decepticon and race to defeat the Autobots. Uh, this is a standalone expansion. Uh, it's compatible with the core game though and will offer two primary modes of play. Competitive play, where the Decepticons squabble amongst each other while they face the Autobots, and cooperative mode where the Decepticons join forces to defeat the Autobots. This team, this uh, expansion also includes rules for team versus team games. Uh, so if you want a bunch of different play, ways to play the Transformers deck building game, then check out A Rising Darkness. Uh, we also have from Renegade Game Studios, the Power Rangers deck building game is getting an expansion. This is RPM Get In Gear. Uh, so, like the other two that we just talked about, the uh, Power Rangers deck building game is a card deck building game based on the Power Rangers IP. Um, so, uh, you are entering the apocalyptic wasteland of Power Rangers RPM. The expansion features the Ranger operators of Corinth, Corinth City and the machine army of the Vengex Virus. New mechanics, RPM, and energy drain provide new strategies to play the game. So if you're a fan of the Power Rangers deck building game, then check out Get In Gear. And then the last expansion I have here is uh, Renegade Games is releasing 
Viscounts of the West Kingdom, Keeper of Keys. This is an expansion to the Garfo Games and Renegade Game Studios collaboration, uh, Viscounts of the White West Kingdom, which was the th third game, yeah, it was the third game in the West Kingdom uh, series from Garfield Games. Uh, you know, you had Architects of the West Kingdom, Paladins of the West Kingdom, Viscounts of the West Kingdom. In Viscounts, there's a, a big rondel uh, system in the middle of the board, and you are, you know, uh, doing things to build up the kingdom. Well, in the Keeper of Keys expansion, tensions continue to rise in the king's court. Some choose to plot in secret, forging alliances with like-minded officials. Others seek out treasures and secret secrets hidden deep within the castle walls. This expansion includes three public buildings for players to compete over. It includes thick player boards and the new chess tiles. Along with more townsfolk, heroes, and manuscript tiles, there are three replacement starting townsfolk for each player, and these grant ways to gain the new chess tiles or to recruit more heroes. So if you're a fan of the West Kingdom series from uh, Shem Phillips and Garfo Games, well, this is the first expansion for Viscounts of the West Kingdom, and it is called Keeper of Keys. So check that out. Um, where, whereas those are, that's, that's all my expansions for the month, but you know, this is uh, an opportunity also, this video, whereas my, my major, my main best games coming to retail is mostly focused on sort of new games and new releases. This is also an opportunity here in this expansion video to shout out some new additions or things like that. Maybe not just an expansion, but kind of a new addition of the game. For instance, um, the Exit series, which uh, many of you know well. Uh, there are a ton of different games in the Exit series from Cosmos Games. Uh, they're all sort of escape room type of games. Well, they are return re releasing the Return to the Abandoned Cabin uh, Exit game. This is, uh, they had a uh, Abandoned Cabin one a number of years ago. And in this one, a police detective rings your doorbell. He asks you to come with him to a cabin of the, in the woods, and you instantly know it's the same cabin in which the sinister riddle master, Dr. Arthur Funbeck, unlocked, locked you up uh, a few years ago. So now you gotta, you gotta figure out how to bring the evil doctor down again in return to the abandoned cabin. R&R Games is releasing a new version of You Must Be an Idiot, this is a game that came out a long time ago, um, and it's a trivia game, but in the game you're going to get something that either uh, says that you're an idiot or you're a smarty, and if you're a smarty, you are trying to get the trivia question correct, and if you are an idiot, you're trying to intentionally get the trivia question wrong, but you don't want to be too obvious because if everybody figures out that you're the idiot, then you're not going to score points. So it's a fun different take on a trivia game. You are trying to intentionally get things wrong sometimes. Uh, Renegade Game Studios is releasing the second edition of Circadian's First Light. Uh, this is also a, a collaboration with um, Garfield Games. So if you are a fan of uh, Circadian's First Light, well now it is back in print with a new edition. Um, also, Catan Studios is releasing Catan Dawn of Humankind. Uh, this is essentially trying to... Um, it's a reboot of the Settlers of the Stone Age uh, version of Catan that came out m many years ago. So this is a... They call it a fresh and vibrant reboot of the original game, The Settlers of the Stone Age. Uh, and it, you know, it's rooted in classic Catan gameplay system with plenty of new game mechanisms, strategies, and adventures to discover. And the last thing I, I will um, call out here is uh, Van Ryder Games has a couple of games that aren't new editions, but they're back in print and they've been out of print for a long time. Uh, both the Detective City of Angels and Hostage Negotiator are back in print and available in the month of September. So if that's a game that those have been out of print for, you know, definitely, I think like a year. Uh, so if you've been wanting to get uh, those games from Van Ryder, well, now you can in the month of September. Detective City of Angels and Hostage Negotiator back in print. So that's what I got for you. Those are the best expansions coming to retail 
in the month of September. So this is going to be a new series that I'm doing every month because you guys wanted it. And so I hope this is help helpful. Let me know in the comments if this is kind of what you were looking for uh, with this expansions video. Uh, and as always, thank you so much for checking it out. Thanks for watching, subscribing, sharing, all that good stuff. Thanks so much. I'm Grant with Grant's Game Rex. Thank you.